Good morning and welcome to Grace for Today. Blessings, everybody. It's another day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. There's an old song that says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. We want our mouths to be filled with words that magnify our great God. He alone deserves the glory, the honor, and the praise. So go ahead and decide, I'm going to bless the Lord today. Whatever happens, some days are rough. Some days require you to really focus and to take a moment to deep breathe and relax and put your mind on the Lord. But we can all choose to bless the Lord at all times. You can allow, and I know sometimes I know I do. Yesterday was one of those days where it was just stressful. But God carried us through, gave us grace, and um, he helps us. That's what, that's what the Holy Spirit is there for, to help us. Help us to be better. And uh, we're growing with him. So continue to grow. Continue to walk with him and allow the Lord to walk with you. Good morning, everybody. Hey, y'all. Thank you for those of you who share as soon as you come on. God bless you. Hey, Sister Dolores. Blessings to you. And thank you. All right. Let's get started, y'all. So as I was a little late, no need for us to hold you up. We're going to 2 Peter chapter 2. We're finishing up chapter 2 of 2 Peter today. We're finishing 2 Peter chapter 2. And um, and I want to look at verses, verse 20. I think we'll start there. And maybe... I won't have to go back to the um, other pages that I, I was on. Good morning, everybody. But let's see. Um, so looking at... Yeah, here we are. So chapter 2, verse 20, verses 20 through 22. And I may need to read the other parts just so that we're all together. But let's start at verse 17 just for good measure and read through 22. These are, this is the English Standard Version. These are waterless springs and mists driven by, by a storm. For them, the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved. For speaking loud boasts loud boast of folly, they entice by sensual passions of the flesh, those who are barely escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. For whatever becomes a person, whatever overcomes a person, to that is he enslaved. Verse 20 says, For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world, they escaped the defilements of the world, how? Through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's how all of us escaped the uh, defilements of the world. Don't you let anybody tell you that there isn't defilements. I'm not saying people are not enjoying it. There are, there are pleasures in sin. And our church folk will give the impression uh, that there's no pleasure out there. There's pleasure, but there's a price you pay. And you have to determine, is it worth it? It's like uh, going to the store, knowing you have no money in your account or limited money and your check bounce or your whatever bounce and you, you incur the uh, overdraft fee of 30 bucks, but your item only costs $5. So was it really, I'm just saying you bought ice cream for $5 and it cost you uh, whatever the overdraft fee is now. I don't know, $30, I think, 30, I, I don't know. Let's just say $30. $35. That's good. $35. You paid $40 for one ice cream cone. Was it worth it? No. No. The price you pay for that pleasure, it's not worth it. And that's why you'd hear the old saints telling folk that, um, you know, be careful out there because you're paying more than it's really worth. You're paying more than it's really worth. He says, um, for if after they have escaped the, I'm sorry, he says uh, of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled 
in them and overcome. So these people escaped the defilements of the world through getting to know Jesus. Through getting to know Jesus. But because of these people, these uh, dried up riverbeds who preach with uh, great swelling words of uh, the scripture called it grandiose. Uh, words that were impressive. They were, the scripture says, they are again entangled and overcome. They are entangled and they overcome. Someone was kind enough to give me some rubber bands. Uh, so I'll use them as part of my example this morning. These are rubber bands. Can y'all see those? Rubber bands. So what they do is they end up getting entangled in something and they can't get loose from it because they've heard these swelling words that sound like they are all good and they get themselves wrapped up into something that they then forget that they were once freed from, I didn't do that right, did I? From the penal, the power and the penalty of sin and they get themselves in a predicament they can't get out. But the only way to be freed is through the knowledge of Jesus and accepting him as Lord. I didn't have any strings, so there you go. He says they are again entangled in them and overcome, which means they are overwhelmed by those things and they see no way out. They see no way to be free. You say, well, that's not me. It may not be you, beloved, but you know people like that who once walked with God. And some of them are at, uh, um, uh, involved in ministries that really are leading them astray because they teach things that are contrary to the scriptures. But they enjoy the pleasure, the notoriety. Remember Balaam? They enjoy the pleasures and the notoriety and the honor that comes from those things because they didn't get it over there. We need to guard our hearts and be careful that we're not pursuing something that takes us the wrong direction. We need to stay at the feet of Jesus. We need to stay at the feet of Jesus. We need to stay at the feet of Jesus. He says in his word, verse 21, for it would have been, let me read the same version. For it would have been better for them to have never known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. It's clear that there, one version says uh, their, they, their state is worse than it was before. It's almost like, and I'm not teaching about this, but this is about our faith warning people to hold on. Don't let go of God. Even some sinners have a better concept of holiness and righteousness, though they don't live it. They will tell you, man, that ain't right. Their moral compass works. Their moral compass works. Their grandmama taught them about Jesus. There are certain things they won't even get involved in. Hey, Sister Margie, they won't even get involved in because they know that's real wrong. I mean, sin is wrong, but they know that's real wrong. That's real bad wrong. I don't do that. There's a limit to where they will go. Exactly, Elder Ingram. That is so true. Moses did say that. He'd rather suffer affliction with the people of God than to endure the pleasures of sin for a season. It's a season. And the world, people are looking for answers and solutions and the church should be their family. It should be providing that. But it's not a codependent kind of thing where I can't move or breathe without you, but where you're teaching me about what love is, that you're teaching me about Jesus, teaching me who he is and how he becomes my sustenance. I'm receiving strength and hope and an expectation from being a part of the body of Christ. Let's read on. Verse 22. What the true proverb says 
has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit and the sow, that's a hog, after washing herself, returns to wallow in the mire. Now, you, some of y'all may not be from the country, but no matter how dressed up, you dress up your hog. He can be pretty and white. You can put pearls around his neck. But you put him near some mud, he's going straight to it, and he's going to roll and wallow until he is filthy. The scripture is telling us this proverb is, proverb is true for those who walked with God and went back or would start walking in error. Most people who walk in error believe they're walking in truth. That's the deception. People are deceived. If you are deceived, you don't know. And that's why you pray for people to walk in truth. You pray for them until Christ be formed in them. Babes in Christ don't just grow on their own. They need to be uh, in a good church that's teaching the word of God so they can grow. They desire the sincere milk of the word that they may grow thereby. We have to have church. We have to be in church. And some people haven't returned to church. And you can tell their lifestyles have changed. They've slipped a little further away from walking with God. They honor God with their mouths, but their hearts are drawing them away after sin, after sinful things. They're finding a passion for those things that they wouldn't have called. And they, they then, then, then begin to disrespect what God has called holy because what's important to them, what draw, as the old folks say, is tickling their fancy are things that are not lining up with the word of God. You can tell by their vocabulary. You can tell by their attire. You can tell by who they want to hang out with because they're fun. But there's so much fun that they're drawing them away from God. I want in my life people who pull me closer to him. Remind me, Sister Edna, we don't do that. We don't act like that. We behave like Jesus. We follow his example. My time is gone. Listen, I want to remind you that we should always yearn for truth found in the Word of God. This is just the New Testament, but it's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. When you look into the Word of God, you should desire it. Let me read this to you. Oh, I have 60 seconds. Those who escape the corrupting forces of this world system through the experience of knowing about our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Messiah, then go back into entanglement with them and are defeated, defeated, defeated by them, becoming worse off than they were, they were to start with. It would have been much better for them to never have experienced the way of righteousness than to know it and then turn away from the sacred obligation that was given to them. They become illustrations of the true proverb. They become illustrations. It is clear that what the enemy does is deceives them and then their lives are worse off. And they don't really, we try to be logical. We want to understand why. Why is this like this? You don't understand everything because you're not seeing it with a spiritual eye. Sometimes I was telling a friend of mine the other day, sometimes the attacks of the enemy aren't always going to be uh, where you're sick or your money is taken. Sometimes it can be that your body is just tired and your concepts. Sometimes what you need to do is rest and begin spending time fighting us in the spiritual warfare, praying in tongues, binding the adversary, speaking the word of God over your own life. That praying in tongues for periods of time is warfare. So pray in English, but pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. The enemy will attack you to make sure, try to make sure that you don't follow the way of God, the plan of God. But he's a liar. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. It will not produce what the enemy intends. Let's pray, beloved. Father, we thank you so much for your word that you've poured into us. Father, as we conclude chapter two, we pray that you remind us that our faith warns us 
It warns us about error. It warns us about deception. It warns us to stay close to you and encourages us to put your word as a priority. Father, wash our minds with your word. Wash our vocabulary. Help us to say what you say and to walk circumspectly, to walk in the spirit so that we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Father, we thank you now. And we believe your word to come to pass in our lives. You're our healer, you're our deliverer, and you're the strength of our lives. We honor you. Cover our homes, cover our loved ones. We thank you for increase coming to our house. Father, I thank you for all that you've done. We receive it done even now in Jesus' name. So it is. Amen. All right, don't forget, life class is tomorrow morning at 1030 a.m. Central Time, right here on Grace for Today. And, um... Share the video, type in catch the replay, hashtag graced for today. Thank you for those of you who always share. Again, I just wanted to tell you, thank you for that. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Subscribe, even if you catch us live here and uh, share it so that others who are not on social media can have access to this message. And I hope that you will join me tomorrow morning for life class and then Monday morning, Lord willing, at 7.15 a.m. Central Time for another study in 2 Peter chapter 3. All right, until then, remember this. Time spent in the Word of God is never wasted, and you have been graced for today. Have a good day and a good weekend, and hope to see you tomorrow or and, and or Monday morning. God bless you. Peace.